The Spiders and Jackets met in the second game of the Atlanta Challenge with both sporting 1-0 records. Richmond had beaten Georgia State Friday 13-6 in 10 innings. Tech put a freshman righty on the mound in the person of Court Rodig from Orlando, Florida to face junior RHP Lowell Shipper. The Spiders pitching completely dominated Tech's bats today, holding the Jackets to five scattered hits and one run on a wild pitch. Only Tristan English had two hits on the day. Richmond had more than enough timely hitting with power to easily win 7-2-1. It didn't seem that close. Rig had a bit of control problem in the first and it nearly cost him a run, but Luke Waddell made a great diving stop to get the third out with a runner on third. He couldn't get out of trouble in the second, though, and was pulled with the bases loaded and one out after a single and two walks. Junior college transfer Amos Willingham limited the damage but gave up a run when a grounder deep to short scored one. It could have been much worse. A lead-off double led to Richmond's second run in the fourth. The inning featured two wild pitches, a single that failed to score the runner from third, and a fielder's choice that did score the run. Tech trailed 0-2, but the Jackets quickly got that run back when Austin Will High tripled, probably should have been an error on RF, and scored on a wild pitch. After shipper walked Nick Wilhite, Richmond brought in lefty senior Jacob Lamb. Any good feelings quickly went away, though, as the first two batters in the Spider fifth singled and homered off the top of the wall in right center. It was suddenly 1-4. They repeated the two-run homer to nearly the same spot after a two-out walk and Willingham was relieved by Micah Carpenter with a score 1-6. After Michael Goldberg pinch hit for Turley in the Tech sixth, Jamie Taylor caught the rest of the game. Righty Kent Morrison finished the game for Richmond starting in the seventh, and got out of a minor jam when the second base umpire called Murray out at second on a fielder's choice. Coach Hall protested vigorously to no avail. Richmond's hot hitting continued in their eighth with back-to-back -back two out singles driving in the seventh and final run. Wilshire relieved Carpenter with a runner on second and went the rest of the way. Tech pitchers only had a single three batter inning all day, and needed a cut stealing for that. The Jackets squandered their last best chance of the day in their eighth. After Colin Hall singled for Tech's first leadoff base runner and Jamie Taylor whacked, Baron Radcliffe pinch hit for Nick Wilhide and crushed a ball just foul to right before striking out. Luke Waddell couldn't score the runners either and it remained 1-7. There was no scoring in the ninth by either team as Tech fell to 1-2-1 and Richmond improved to 2-0. Odig got the lost shipper the win. Tech beats West Virginia in extras to get second win the final game of the Atlanta Challenge was moved to Saturday at 6 due to weather forecast for Sunday. The Mountaineers came in on a high note after beating Georgia State 8-2. They had lost at Kennesaw State Friday. LHP Connor Thomas pitched for the Jackets versus junior RHP Cade Stroud. Errors would hurt the Jackets terribly in this game, notably by the usually steady Oscar Serratos. WVU seemingly had a bottomless bullpen of quality arms in the game, but eventually ran out and Tech salvaged the win in extra ends. It didn't take the Jackets long to double their run production of the first game. After Tristan English singled with two outs in the first, Kyle McCann lined a rifle shot into the trees at right to make it 2-0. Colin Hall scored to make it 3-0 in the second after he doubled and Michael Goldberg drove him in with a single, but runs would be hard to come by for Tech thereafter. In the WVU third, Luke Waddell saved a run for the second time today with a diving stop on a grounder with a runner on third and two outs. He had gotten there after two uncharacteristic mistakes, a walk by Thomas and error by Serratos. After Goldberg singled and Nick Wilhite hit a liner that was barely caught by the LF, WVU brought in lefty Zach Reed with one out in the Tech fifth. He retired Waddell and Murray to end the inning. 
Reed didn't stay long though, and was relieved in the Tech sixth after hitting English and giving up a single to McCann. Righty Gabe Kurtzals came in with runners on the corners and no outs. A double play grounder by Serratos made it 4-0 but kept the inning short. Disaster struck in the top of the seventh. After a two-out walk and single, Kevin Brophy pinch hit and grounded to Serratos, who threw it away to first. English got it home in plenty of time to get the runner there, but McCann threw it past third deep into left field, allowing two runs. Next Owens doubled in the third run. Finally, another grounder resulted in a safe at first, but this time English's throw home got Owens trying to score and kept it 4-3. It was a truly horrible inning and the Mountaineer faithful were getting noisy. Zach Ottinger, a righty, pitched for WVU in the bottom of the seventh. Two walks and two outs, righty Philip Dull relieved him. After he retired Murray, Tristan English moved to the mound to try to save the win for Thomas and Jackson Webb relieved English at first. Sadly, Marquez Inman crushed a fly ball over right center to tie it at four. Another righty, Sam Kessler, pitched to Tech in the eighth and stayed through the tenth. At this point, both my wife and I were getting very cold so the rest of the game is from WREK on ACC TV. After scoreless 9th and 10th innings, Keaton Gibson was pitching in the 11th when two costly errors by Serratos put runners on 2nd and 3rd with one out. Gibson struck out the batter and Luke Bertnitsky came in for his first collegiate appearance, getting the big out 3 with a looking K. Freshman Bo Lowry gave up a double to Colin Hall and infield single to Austin Wilhite in the Tech 11th. The Mountaineers intentionally walked Cole Newber to load them for Nick Wilhite with the infield and outfield drawn in. Nick poked one through the left side and it was over 5-4 in walk-off fashion. The Jackets had somehow survived making five errors. Tech improved 2-1, WVU fell to 1-2. Luke Bertnitsky got a vulture win for his first and Lowry got the loss. Bottom line with a trip to Statesboro, weather permitting, coming Tuesday in powerhouse UCLA on the way for next weekend, the Jackets better get their defense in order. Tonight's win will make it more palatable to have a rainy Sunday off. Uniform note, the Jackets are wearing high stirrups this year so far, a rare look in college baseball. I like it.